Good morning, folks at home. How is it going? Welcome to the channel and welcome to this week's episode. I'm so happy you guys could join me for this week's video. Now, on today's video, I am running on a whopping zero hours of sleep. I was up all night playing Minecraft with one of my really good friends. You know who you are. I know you're watching this video. You know who you are. Um, so if I catch zero fish today, it's all your fault. I'm blaming you. I'm blaming Minecraft. Anyways, on today's video, we are going to be fishing some spots that have produced fish for me many times in the past. But I have noticed something about these spots, and that is that they are starting to become very pressured. These spots are getting fished a ton nowadays. And last year, really, these spots weren't really getting touched much at all. But now, so many people are getting out there, doing a little bit of dangling, and you can tell that these fish have been caught before. You can tell at these spots if they're super pressured. And this one behind me is unfortunately becoming one of those spots. So that can definitely prove to be a challenge for many anglers like myself at some of their favorite spots, fishing ponds that weren't super pressured before, but now they are starting to become very pressured. So that's what we're doing in today's video. We're fishing some of my favorite spots that have unfortunately become very pressured and the spawn season definitely played a big role in that a lot of people started getting out there fishing in the spring and that kind of causes a bunch of pressure on some of these ponds so hopefully we can connect to a couple good ones today but yeah let's go ahead and get in today's video and hopefully we connect with some of the green guys let's get after it well guys you may remember this spot i have been here many many times and today i'm going to start off with a presentation that has gotten me bites many many times at this spot i brought a couple rods so i may do some experiments i may throw some different lures just to try to figure out what these fish really want because like i said these spots are starting to become super pressured so tactics that may have worked before might not work as well anymore so we're gonna find out the chatterbait no way first cast that's a good one first cast we had one he spit it there's one at my feet bro there's one i think that could be on a bed potentially what is going on okay hold on that was a good fish first freaking cast if that's the only bite we get i'm gonna be super mad but there's a fish just chilling on the bank right here in front of me if this happens this would be crazy i don't see oh i see him now Oh uh, yeah, he spooked off. We might have ourselves a freaking day. I don't want to jump the gun and say things that won't happen, but we had a bite on our first cast. Saw a nice one up shallow. <sighs> Could be good. Could be freaking good. I got here early. This is actually the earliest I've ever fished in a long, long time. I got out here pretty stinking early. And I'm hoping that we can get on a good moving bait bite before the sun gets up and it gets a little bit hotter. Oh, Might've just got hit again, actually. Let's get back out there and hopefully we can connect with them again. That one is back. And he spooked off again though. That's a good sign though. I mean, that is a fish that is most likely on a bed. I wasn't really look, there we go, there's a fish. As I was saying, that's not as big, but he's a solid fish. As I was saying, I'm not really looking for fish on beds today, but if they come, I'll take it. Oh yeah, that's not a bad one at all. Go ahead and get up here, buddy. Boom. Oh! Man, what is it with these fish spitting the hook? There he goes. He wasn't very big, but man, can you guys stay on? I would appreciate it, for real. Man, that's two bites. <laughs> I, we'll count it, we'll count it. I say we count it. Let's get back in there. There he is. There he is. Skiing him in. That's not a bad fish, actually. That is a good fish. Come on, please stay on. Please stay on, Bust. He's going in the weeds. Get out of there. That's a good fish. Come on. Yes. There we go. First one landed of the day. First one landed of the day on the chatterbait. Super skinny fish. You can tell this fish is post-spawn. You can tell this fish is post-spawn for sure. Just look at how skinny she is. Oh my goodness, dude, that is probably three to four bites in a matter of minutes. Dude, that fish circling is actually like really good size. If we can get him to eat today, that would be awesome. But there we go. First fish of the day. 
gonna go ahead and set them over here so we don't disturb the fish that is likely on a bed gonna go ahead and give them a nice little toss see you buddy take care go tell your friends to eat my chatterbait i would really appreciate it dude this is building up we got a bite from a nice fish missed him we almost landed a pretty solid fish and then we actually landed a pretty solid fish so and there's one at our feet still i have have i told you guys there's one at my feet yet have i mentioned that yet i feel like i haven't but there is and he's lurking you know the more that i'm thinking about it i really do think this fish is on a bed because i was fishing fork last week i posted that video last week go ahead and check it out we caught a really nice one actually i'll leave the link in the description if you would like to check out that video um but we caught a oh yeah they're definitely spawning still because i see two they're paired up male and female about the same size both of them are probably about three pounds i'd say but yeah i think these fish are definitely there are some spawners still believe it or not we are in almost june and we still got a few spawners because i was fishing fork like i was saying before i got a little sidetracked and i caught a really nice one that was pre-spawn a really nice fish that was pre-spawn believe it or not she was full of eggs ready to burst and she was like six pounds 10 ounces roughly um full of eggs you could just tell but like i said i'm not actively hunting those fish today i'm not actively wanting to catch fish on beds if i see some really nice ones on beds i'll probably take a few casts at them just like these two si sitting right here there's another one that's a good one dude what is happening that is a nice fish come on stay out of the weeds oh that is a good one that is a giant guys actually hold on come here that is a i don't know is he quite three should we weigh him oh you can tell these fish are post spawn dude another really skinny one let's get a quick weight on them we're gonna send them back as fast as we can bet she's right at three pounds maybe just below all right it is in pounds let's see oh yeah just 3.28 pounds so a little over three actually nice skinny post spawner on the bladed jig and we're gonna go ahead and send her on her way like i say like i was saying you can tell that these fish are post spawn just because of how skinny they are but i'm loving it that means that you might catch some really hungry ones because they've been on the bed so long all right see you sister go get you a real meal i can tell that you are in need of one and there she goes just just gliding off let's go get some more boys this dude i'm loving this I just got out here probably 10 minutes ago, if that, and we've caught two, had more opportunities. And let's just keep at it, boys. Let's just keep her rolling. There we go, there's another one. Another one on the chatterbait, not as big. We're just gonna ski him in. He's digging though. He's running, man. These fish in here just fight so unbelievably hard. Even though they are not that big, they fight so hard. Mean little guy, full of some spunk. Little football, go ahead and send him back. See you, buddy. That is three fish for the good old bladed jig. You guys, if you've been watching the videos for a little while, you know, you know Robin Real loves his chatterbaits. They tend to provide pretty much year round for me. The only time they don't really get bites is in the winter. Um, and that's when fish are a little bit lethargic. But I mean, pretty much every other time of the year, you're going to get some nibs on chatterbaits. And we've gotten some nibs on chatterbaits. Oh, we just got bit again, actually. We just got bit again. Hold on. Not far from my feet at all, actually. There we go. There's a fish. I did not expect this fish to eat, actually. I was looking at another one. This is a nice one, another another pretty healthy fish. I was looking at another one, and then I felt some weight. And sure enough, we had a fish on. There were like three fish up shallow. But this fish is insanely warm, though. Oh my goodness. But you know, when you see three fish together, 
up shallow it's going down it's going downtown we're gonna go ahead and send him back right now but i see a pretty solid fish right now see you buddy go ahead and get back down there but when you see three fish together up shallow you know it's going down so these fish surprisingly enough are still spawning a lot of them are post-spawn though but you will find the anomaly bass that is still spawning this time of year there we go there we go get over here don't go in the weeds these fish in here dig man these fish in here freaking dig get up here another good one another good one this one might also be three pounds it almost looks like the same fit eh, it's a little bit smaller yeah not quite three but man are they freaking munching this morning all right see ya none of these fish however are units like none of these fish are giants but i feel like if we weed through these two these three pounders these one and a half pounders this pond is capable and has the potential of blessing us with a personal best bass i'm not saying we're going to catch a pb today as much as i would love to catch a pb today it's just you know like i was saying earlier my name's robin real i catch the small fish um yeah it's unlikely that we catch a fish super giant because i feel like a lot of times the big ones tend to look down and what i mean by that is i feel like the bigger fish tend to eat bottom baits but especially at this pond i feel like if you're gonna catch mega mondo you're looking for you're gonna want to throw something on the bottom jackson one of my really good friends i know you're watching this video i'm gonna toot your horn for you for a second he actually caught his personal best out of here which was seven one on a craw that's the only fish we've ever caught on a craw out of this pond so i just have a bunch of faith in there he is oh my gosh these fish are freaking munching this one is so green too i gotta get this one in look at the red lips on them oh my god all skinny all skinny all hungry wanting a meal man look at that fish look at that freaking fish you can't tell me that's not a good looking fish other than the fact that he's relatively skinny i mean if this fish was filled out he'd be high threes easy he's probably i don't know he's probably one and three quarters probably two i bet he, i'll give him two but his mouth for his size is big his mouth for his size is big he'd probably be three and a half if he wasn't post spawn but unfortunately a lot of these fish are post spawn like i've been saying and like the title suggests these fish are post spawn but we're gonna go ahead send buster back right now and i gotta say my release jobs today have been primo i'm just gonna showboat a little bit for a second my release jobs have been absolutely on point not one belly flop There we go on the crawl on the crawl that's a good one wow he got up there on the freaking crawl let's go changed up the presentation a little bit went to a bottom bait and it paid off first cast on the crawl another really skinny one but a pretty good one at that on the crawl i want to get a weight on this guy just for shizzies and giggies yep 2.77 on the crawl but we're gonna go ahead and send sister back set her right back where we caught her there we go another one on the crawl jeez dude look at this fish is mad bro get up here number two on the crawl this is probably 
maybe tied for our smallest fish. Actually, probably our second smallest. One of the ones that we caught on the chatterbait was definitely smaller, but another one that actually stole the appendages of our craw. Gonna go ahead and get the dirt off of them and waste no time with them and send them right back. They're obviously chewing today, so let's get back in there and hunt for that big one. Well guys, that's what time it is, 8.48. And uh, this is what my thumb looks like. You may not be able to tell, you may not really be able to see, but I got a case of good old bass thumb. And for only fishing for about an hour to an hour 15, somewhere in there, and already having bass thumb, I mean, hey, it's been a good day so far, but like all things, good things must come to an end. Um, and unfortunately, that bite, that good bite, did unfortunately come to an end. So I thought I'd meet you guys back at the car. I thought I'd talk about kind of what the game plan is from here. And what we're going to do, obviously, as a pond hopper, we're going to hop some ponds. We're going to slide on over to another zone. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead, see you guys at spot number two, where hopefully, fingers crossed, we make it happen. All right, guys, I'll see you there. Well guys, we have arrived to spot numero dos. And man, does this spot look amazing. Just take a look at the slop on top of the water. That just calls for a frog. So hopefully we can get some frog blow ups today because that would be just absolutely splendid if we could do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie on a frog real quick. See if we can go ahead and catch one on the friggity frog and uh, Let's just get at it. Let's see if we can pull any out of here. And then, I mean, if not, we've already had an amazing day on the water and I can't complain one bit. So we're just gonna see if we can add on to it today. Oh, we just had one come up and eat it. He missed it though. That's not the line's fault. That's not my fault. He just missed it that time. There we go, on the frog. Oh, he came off. I didn't get the hooks in him. He came off, no. You just can't quite stick him when you're throwing a flog, uh, a flog, a frog on fluorocarbon. Ah. Well, ladies and gents, that's all she wrote. So I'm gonna go ahead and get up on out of here and I'm gonna meet you guys at the crib, specifically in the garage where I'm gonna talk about really, I guess the three techniques that got it done. Um, and as you guys know, this little doohickey right here proved to be today's MVP. So I'm gonna touch base with y'all at the house. I'm gonna touch on the fact that we absolutely killed him at the first spot today. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys once we get over there. Miller? Miller! Miller, you ready to talk baits? You ready to talk baits, Miller? Let's talk baits. Well guys, we have arrived to the crib, as you can tell by my amazing dog, Miller, greeting us back to the house. Um, but quickly, I wanna talk baits and specifically what got the job done today. So the MVP, you guys know, you guys watch the video, you're here until this point. Thank you, by the way, for sticking around and staying to the very end of the video. So I get to tell you guys exactly what worked and what didn't. So what did work, and man, did it work, was the white chatterbait, also known as the bladed jig. I don't know exactly how many fish we caught on it today. I haven't reviewed any of the footage, uh, but I wanna say it was probably over seven or eight fish on the bladed jig. Um, not all of which were on camera because some of them were small and the catches were kind of uneventful. So not all of them were on camera, but that is the main, that was the main ticket in today's fishing send was the white bladed jig. And that's what it tends to be, man. That bait is so consistent for me. 
uh, year round even, that bait is super consistent and it just tends to get bites. It just tends to always get bites. And it's a super confidence bait for me. It's a bait that I throw whenever I'm trying to break apart a new body of water, or even if I'm throwing a body of water that I know like the back of my hand, which I did today. So the next tactic that worked today was none other than the Texas rigged craw. I think we caught two fish on the Texas rigged craw, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and two of those fish were actually probably some of our biggest fish. The biggest fish we did catch today obviously was on the bladed jig, which was that three pounder, which kind of topped off the day. The final technique that we got bites on today was the frog at the second spot of the day. Unfortunately, we didn't catch any on the frog, but we had opportunities. I feel like that's probably because I have fluorocarbon. And if you remember me saying earlier in today's video, use braided line when you're throwing a frog. Um, there's a lot less give and there's a lot more just meat and power into throwing braided line and the fluorocarbon just doesn't drive those hooks into the fish as well doesn't bring the fish out of that heavy cover as well as braid does um, i just didn't have braid tied on and i none of my rods here in the garage even have braid so i need to buy a new reel at some point i need to buy a specifically frogging reel um, which I will do at some point. I just haven't done that yet, but I'll probably should do it soon because frog season is approaching and to be honest, frog season might even be here already because we got a few bites on the frog today, as you guys saw at the second spot. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate went down, dropped an upwards thummy, thought about subscribing, would help your boy out a ton. Um, and yeah, guys, just give me some feedback in the comments. Let me know what videos you'd like to see. I have some videos uh, planned of maybe doing some crappie fishing or some catfish fishing. So if you guys could drop a comment or drop a like, that lets me know that you guys want to see those videos. The month of June, I plan on going absolutely bonkers. I have some crazy ideas, some crazy trips. And I hope you guys just stay tuned because the month of June could be absolutely legendary. It realistically could be the best fishing month of my life and the best month on YouTube for me so far. If you guys are familiar with the basketball community, you know about June Flight. June Robin Reel, I don't know, might overtake June Flight. We'll see, we'll find out this June. So I hope you guys stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.